Chapter 1. Sex isn't merely a physical act. It is also profoundly psychological. The male genitals are often the reference for the measure of manliness in regards to size and performance. Dr. Ian Kerner explains that the male genitalia is a large protected area of the body because it sits at the confluence point for the emotional insecurities heaped upon it by society. This need for safety stems from a fear of vulnerability, a reluctance to be open. Thus, a man unconsciously protects his pelvic area because it is highly sensitive. The male genitalia are the cause for a lot of insecurity today in men because of society's size standards. In sex and sexual stimulation, the penis holds many sweet spots, but only one gets significant attention from men and their partners, the glands. It is the soft bulb at the tip of the penis and is heavily sensitive to stimulation. It is the area the man is quickest to get an orgasm from, wildly, if he's been frequently masturbating. Further down is the shaft, which holds the engine of the penis as it houses three muscle bindings that draw in blood during arousal and hold it until he finishes. This area of the penis is of great concern to the man because it can vary in size and width. Often, sex gets misconstrued as merely a physical act, but it is more psychological than physical. The aversion to letting women go beyond the penis to the scrotum or the forbidden spot, the anus, is based on his desire to maintain control. The pelvis offers so much vulnerability that he's unwilling to let go because society asks him to always be in control. But men have G-spots too, yes? Where? It's located about three inches inside the rectum. If he wants a fulfilling orgasm and trusts you, he'll let you touch him there. Sex for men is more profound than just a physical act. It is more psychological than we think. In the following chapters of this summary, we shall explore the many complexities of the male genitalia, how to please your man, and some of the reasons you might have difficulty pleasing him regardless of your efforts. We will also get a comprehensive look at the mental aspects of sex and just how to gain mastery of the art of sexual pleasure. Chapter 2. The Implications of Desire in a Healthy Sexual Relationship Do Not Get Enough Attention Dr. Ian Kerner cites sexual responses occur in four stages, excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. But one step is often omitted, desire. Desire is left out because we think it is part of arousal, but this makes having sex seem like a mechanical activity, devoid of any emotion, which is untrue. Men require an emotional connection in sex just as much as women. Desire doesn't begin in the pelvis. It starts in the mind and sustains sexual relationships to a large extent. Men won't just sleep with anyone, and there has to be, on some level, a measure of desire. Sex is a very emotional action as it is physical. Without some level of desire, it would be empty. Desire gets taken for granted in a relationship, especially when the sex is at an all-time low. The impatient partner does not understand that drugs won't fix his lack of erection because it isn't a physical problem. A lack of desire has led to a high divorce rate in the U.S. Refusal to accept an emotional spark won't always be in a relationship, but it can burn again at any time with communication and effort. If you wish to satisfy your partner adequately, make it a habit to communicate more. You can try to figure out your partner's fantasies as they might be an indicator of what would get him excited in bed. It would help if you also learn to be sensitive to his insecurities to avoid him drifting away further and pulling up his pants. There could be a lot of stuff going on in his head, affecting his sexual arousal and performance. Learn about the things he's touchy about during sex and focus on those. He might be overly concerned about ejaculation, be it premature or otherwise directly proportional to orgasms. You should introduce him to pleasures that offer more than just ejaculatory endings. It's not just the many nerve endings located in the pelvic area that can cause men to be protective of what's going on below their waist. 
His sexual response or arousal can also be a stress-inducing subject. Dr. Ian Kerner, Chapter 3. To reduce boredom during sexual intercourse, you can throw in some novel ideas to spice things up. It is easy to write off the intricacies behind a man's sex drive because society believes his arousal is somewhat more straightforward than that of a woman. But in truth, it is also as complex and should be treated as such. Sex drive is the equivalent to hunger, and it can, of course, get satisfied. But frequently, we eat whatever is available to quench the hunger for food. Even though we crave one thing, something else is more appealing. This hunger is the same for sex. Men can feed their sexual desire with just about any woman they meet, except for the picky 1%. But what informs a healthy sexual drive or appetite? And how can you gauge if a man, your man, is sexually fit? Male arousal is a very complex concept that is often overlooked or ignored. The first thing to make sure of is that he exercises. If he's physically fit and takes time to maintain that fitness, he will have a healthy sexual appetite. Exercising causes the body to release a massive load of testosterone and endorphins. You also have to be sure he is eating right. Some foods and fruits can either increase or decrease his libido. Make sure he only eats the good ones for his health all around. Exercise and a good diet are great for his sexual drive, but if he isn't getting enough rest, he would have drastically low libido and be unable to perform adequately. Added to rest, sleep is often mistaken and used interchangeably as rest, but is an essential part of one's health upkeep. If he's not getting enough sleep, he'll be sluggish and uninspired and will pass on having sex altogether. Sexual health is highly dependent on physical health, exercise, and diet. If all is well and good in the health check, then you can move on to foreplay. Firstly, foreplay isn't anything sexual. It involves more emotional actions. Proper foreplay is the little things couples do outside the bedroom. Movies, dates, walks on the beach, sleeping in, and stuffing on junk food together. These things foster a healthy mental stimulation that will eventually lead to great intercourse because it all starts in the brain, where the magic of hormones begins. Chapter 4. There is a naughtier side to foreplay and intimacy that can bring about boundless pleasure. Sex comes off as something to be cautious and well-mannered about, with all unspoken excesses reserved for the dark recesses of our minds. But in truth, the sex life of a couple can benefit significantly from a bit of shameless revelation. Instead of keeping your fantasies to yourself, you could share them with your partner. It might seem extreme, but that's just enough to jolt the relationship back to life. Sex doesn't have to be polite or cautionary. You can explore with bolder moves. A little imagination can go a long way in adding spice to the relationship. Your partner might have things they would like to try but feel too ashamed to share with you. If you share yours, they may feel free and share theirs too. The benefits greatly outweigh the costs. Dr. Kerner suggests extreme foreplay isn't a call to ramp up the physical aspects of foreplay, but to embrace some honest, dirty talking. Express what you want from your partner in the bedroom. Communication is vital in keeping the sex life healthy. There are so many things we leave unsaid that can add a kick to our sexual lives. Besides sharing fantasies and stating preferences in the bedroom, we can significantly benefit from a bit of storytelling. You can also create a fantasy world where you and your partner have the wildest sexual encounter, and it is possible to alter it as many times as you like, adding whatever details would incite the most arousal. You can spice up your relationship by taking risks and role-playing. As you venture into and experiment with world fantasies and fibs, you can also try and add a bit of adventure, bringing some of that fantasy to life. You can initiate sex in the car. He might be against it at first, but Dr. Ian Kerner assures you he will be into experimenting with new places. 
the sex could be on a private picnic in the restroom of a fancy restaurant, the parking lot of the supermarket, and endless possibilities. Adventure adds a bit of exhilaration to the whole experience, redefines sexual pleasure, and significantly improves the relationship. In general, all relationships progress through three stages, lust, romantic love, and attachment. The first two stages are fueled by essential biochemicals such as dopamine and norepinephrine. Dr. Ian Kerner, Chapter 5. There is a tedious connection between the heart and the penis, although most people don't realize it. Often, women complain that their new boyfriend is taking too long to have sex with them, or their husbands no longer initiate sex, which bothers them. They often translate it to mean there is no longer desire for them, or they're just not that into them anymore. Some men aren't going to rush into sex until they're very sure of their feelings for you. When a man meets a woman he likes, he's usually more hesitant to initiate sex because he doesn't want to confuse lust for love, stalling until he's very sure. For men, sex is their way of expressing their love explicitly. So, if your boyfriend isn't pushing for sex but takes you on several dates and you two hang out a lot, fret not. He's just saving it for a particular time when he can be entirely sure he's in love. Without an emotional connection, sex is ultimately mechanical and might never get suggested. A lack of emotional connection is a much bigger problem than the credit it gets. It can make having sex empty and mechanical and, frankly, unsatisfactory. Dr. Kerner suggests a few simple but effective ways to foster an emotional connection to enable sexual relationships and fix this disparity. The first tip is hugging. A simple embrace can initiate intimacy. Whenever you feel low on emotional currency, reach for your partner and hug them tightly until you feel refreshed. Physical presence is also essential. If you are always there for your partner, they'll feel like they matter and move closer to you. Have sex with your eyes open. It is the one way of fostering closeness on an emotional level. Try the missionary position more often. While you're at it, one often overlooked way to foster emotional intimacy is kissing. Sex and foreplay aren't physical actions only. They are deeply emotional activities. So instead of focusing so much on the physical aspects, try to be open and sensitive to the emotional foundations, and you'll see a lot of change for the better in your sex life and, ultimately, your relationship. Did you know? The average male orgasm lasts only six seconds. Chapter 6. The physical approach to increasing the pleasure experience during sexual intercourse requires all hands to be on deck. Here, we will explore the many ways to give your man maximum pleasure with just your hands. Women are usually the beneficiaries of this handiwork, but men can also benefit from some of it. There's more to sex than just intercourse. Foreplay is an integral part of the whole thing. Don't be shy or afraid to initiate these with him. He'll thank you later. You can get him to have sex with no clothes on. When he has to get naked, often slow during foreplay, it delays the orgasm substantially. Typically, the process of undressing is rapid and usually the only thing on his mind is climaxing before he can get his clothes off. Touch yourself. Most women are shy about touching themselves during sex and focus only on the man's pleasure, but he will feel more joy if he knows you're enjoying yourself as you please him. Get him to let you tie him up. This way, he's vulnerable, and you can have your way to please him entirely without him restraining you. This action gives him a form of sexual liberation that heightens the sexual pleasure he will experience. Don't be shy to give him a massage. He has sweet spots, and you can only find them during the massage. Home them and use them to please him. Start gently, stroking him ever so slightly. Don't rush it. Let the tension build as you go. Caress the shaft lightly, also, not getting tempted to grab or squeeze. Cup his testicles and massage the area at the base of the penis softly. Introduce a new player into the mix. 
He's most definitely hard now, and you can use his penis to stimulate your vulva, gently rubbing his glands up against it. Owing to the great sensitivity of both areas, you'd be pleasuring the two of you at the same time. Foreplay isn't just a hurried phase. It's a slow and patient series of activities that build up to sex. These steps aren't the only surefire ways one can get their partner to achieve satisfaction before sexual intercourse, but they'll get the results if one follows them. Chapter 7. Several techniques can maximize the pleasure of sexual intercourse. When you approach the main event of sexual stimulation and buildup, it is important to tread carefully not to rush the process and reach climax too soon without mutual pleasure. Previously, we saw that foreplay is a slow and patient process that prepares your partner for the main event. Now that you have built up enough tension and pleasure through foreplay, you can start getting him to climax with sex. This time is engaging his shaft and slowly grinding on it. Keep it going and then stop once you notice he's reaching ejaculatory inevitability. The more you stall his orgasm, the better it will be. Take note of his arousal levels and don't overshoot it. Slow your rhythm and ensure you are getting pleasured too. After building up enough pleasure with foreplay, you can move on to finishing the job. Switch up the rhythm stimulation periodically using your hands, mouth, and vulva as you please. Work your partner up to climax, if possible, with your mouth or hands. Your partner will appreciate the tease more than hate it. You can also time your strokes, throw in a bit of kissing, and maintain eye contact. This way, you maximize mutual pleasure during intercourse. Note that delaying his climax will make the final orgasm much more profound. The key to maximum pleasure in sex is the slow and steady movement to delay and heighten the pleasure. During penetration, do not rush. Let him in just a little bit and slowly work the penis in with your hand and ride him slowly without going all the way down. When you feel ready, let him go all the way in, maintain the rhythm, and make sure you seize and sustain control throughout intercourse. Finally, if he's not too shy, you can try stimulating his anus and give him a much more enjoyable orgasm as a result. Conclusion The male genitalia get overlooked when it comes to sexual arousal or stimulation. There is way more focus on the female and her sexual urges and needs. It almost feels like society expects men to approach sex as mechanical chores with zero need for arousal or any attention paid to their psychological health. Dr. Ian Kerner explains that the myth about men not needing feelings to have sex is detrimental to the more significant sexual health issues. There is a lot of trauma and shame that's attached to the sexual health of men because society requires men not to express or process emotions. This notion makes females ignore the need to first stimulate the minds of the men before rushing to physical stimulation. Dr. Kerner offers tested and trusted methods to connect with your partner and give him ultimate satisfaction honestly. Sex is a complex, beautiful thing, grossly misunderstood, and as such, loads of people have been dissatisfied with their sex lives. Men are considered unemotional about sex, and their sex life doesn't get enough airtime. But there is so much underneath to discover if you pay enough attention. A lot of his sexual activity is emotionally driven, and once you can master how to manage his heart, you can do much better with physical stimulation. Sex is the main way guys express their emotions. Making love is our way of saying, I love you, and truly feeling it as well as really meaning it. While women generally deem closeness a prerequisite for engaging in sex, for a man, having sex is the main way of achieving a true sense of closeness with a woman, Dr. Ian Kerner. Try this. Don't be shy or afraid to try new things both in and outside the bedroom. Try to think of your partner as an emotional being. Appeal to his emotions before appealing to the physical stimulation.